Okay, and I just want to do one last example here. It has to do with uh, physics now, so we're looking at the distance problem. In calculus one, we looked at the velocity problem. If I know the position of a particle at any given time, can I find its velocity? It turned out to be yes, we can. It's the slope of the tangent line, or the derivative of the position function at a particular time. What about this? The distance problem. Find the distance traveled if we know its velocity. So it's the opposite question. Now I know the velocity. Can I find the distance traveled or its position? So we know the velocity function. We want to find the position function. Remember, this direction was calc 1. This was the derivative. This direction, starting with the velocity and finding the position, that's calc 2. So how do we do that? Well, I want to make this connection with area. Turns out that it's related to area. Going from position to velocity was related to the derivative or the tangent line. Going from velocity to position is related to the area. So let's look at a particular velocity curve or a representation of a velocity curve here. And I'm over some interval a to b. <coughs> And what I want to do is find the position, or the distance traveled by the, the object. Um, well, what I can do is I can do the same thing, slice it all up into a bunch of intervals. Um, why would I slice it? Well, it won't become obvious until we start looking at this. But one of the things is, look at this reminder, distance equals velocity times time. This is just a rewritten version of velocity is distance divided by time. Now the key with this, distance is velocity times time, this is if velocity is constant. If velocity is constant, and we know how long the particle is traveling, the object is traveling, then I just multiply the velocity times the time and I can figure out how far it's traveled. But if velocity is not constant, well that's the situation we're dealing with right here. But the idea is you slice up the region into all of these little intervals and then you hope that on a little small interval, thin slice, you could roughly just approximate the velocity by a constant. How do we approximate it by a constant? I just cap it off. I say on this particular interval, I'm just going to say that the velocity is constant. It's the value at t1. It's v of t1, or ti. It's v of ti. I'm just going to say it's constant, uh, a rough approximation. So. What do we have here? We have that the area under the velocity curve over ti minus 1 to ti, what I've called the ith slice, uh, I should say over, not of, over the interval, or on this ith slice, is what? It is the area under the curve is, well, it's approximately just this width here, delta t. So that's the time that it's been traveling, times the height. The height, which we're going to take to be vti. So that's the area under the curve. That's approximately that. Ah, velocity, time. Velocity times time? I'm assuming velocity is constant? That's just the distance. The area under the curve on this portion, uh, on this interval, is just the distance the particle has traveled. So this is the distance object has traveled on the interval ti minus 1 to ti. So what does that mean? It means that the area under the curve in general, under whole curve, under whole curve from A to B, that thing there, the area under the whole curve, is the distance traveled.
So we know the velocity curve. Working out the area under the curve turns out to be the distance that the particles traveled, the object has traveled. So going from position to velocity in calculus one was the derivative. Going from velocity to position in calculus two, this is the area problem. Now, I've sort of drawn in such a way that the derivative is analogous to area in these two courses. This is not really the case. The derivative, the geometrical interpretation of it, is the tangent line. In calculus two, our geometric objects that we're studying are really related to areas. So that's the analogy here, tangent line in calculus one, area in calculus two. The derivative was the quantity that, uh, the name that we gave to the quantity associated, associated with the tangent line. In calculus two, the name that we give to this quantity associated with area is known as the integral. And that's the thing we're wanting to study. And so as we've seen, it almost looks like calculus two is just doing everything that calculus one in the opposite direction. That's what this physics example tells us. In some sense, calculus one was all about derivatives and tangent lines. Calculus two seems to be about areas and integrals, and they're doing the opposite of each other. So maybe we're doing everything we did last term backwards, and in some sense, that's essentially what we're going to be doing. This is known as the fundamental theorem of calculus. This gives us uh, a, you know, a bit of foresight into that the fundamental theorem of calculus is going to make this connection. So those of you who've seen it before know very well that this is coming, but in the, in the next few sections, we're going to be working up to the fundamental theorem of calculus and seeing this connection between the area problem and, and derivatives. All right, so that's it for this lecture. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.